What makes a game memorable? For me, it consists of a few different aspects that work together in tandem to make a memory for us, such as gameplay, art, story, and more importantly, music. If you were to imagine your favorite games in the 16-bit era and made them devoid of music, would they really still be your favorite game? For some, it might not matter, but for me, a good solid soundtrack is the glue that cements the experience. Today we're going to take a look at the Sega Genesis, and I'm going to tell you my top 10 Sega Genesis soundtracks. Now I will say, it's a huge pet peeve of mine when people talk about music and then talk over it. So I'll give you a little insight into it, and then I'll shut up and let the music do its job. Let's begin. Gunstar Heroes is an interesting game and it carries an interesting aspect of Konami's history. Maesato Maegawa had tons of credits under his belt with Konami, and he wanted to create a good solid run and gun, and Gunstar Heroes would be that game. Konami said no, so he said, well, fuck you, and created his own company, Treasure, which released Gunstar Heroes in 1993. The composer for the game, Norio Hanzawa, did an excellent job of really making the Genesis sound chip work. And even though I've never played this, I am very familiar with this game's soundtrack. Let's take a listen. Mega Turrican is the third game in the Turrican franchise and Chris Hulsbeck's melodies really supplement the action of the game. I actually listened to the soundtrack on the way to pick up my girls from the school bus. True story. Every game in the Shining franchise has a very distinct sound, and the best way that I can describe it is incredibly organic symphonic sounds, like the trumpets actually sound like trumpets, and not some just synth sample, right? The composer, Motoaki Takenouchi, took over from Masahiko Yoshimura and kept the same compositional style all the way up to Shining Force 2, which is the fifth game in the franchise. If you want a good solid soundtrack that fits any mood that you're in, Shining Force 2 will do it for you. Thank you. 
Another treasure game, Alien Soldier had a weird release, and it's a shame because it's a really cool time on the Genesis. Obviously, it had a physical release in Japan and Europe, but in America, it wasn't released at all, at least not physically. Instead, it was provided to American audiences through the Sega channel. Alien Soldier wasn't the only game to get this treatment either. Pulse Man and Mega Man The Wily Wars were also exclusives on the Sega channel, and obviously that doesn't exist anymore, so you're going to need to emulate it. This was a very difficult choice, because much like Donkey Kong Country in my previous soundtrack episode, Sonic has always had extremely amazing music. Truly epic soundtracks, likely because Michael Jackson was involved, at least in Sonic 3, until he decided to go off on a kid-touching bender. Allegedly. I personally feel that Sonic 3 has the funkiest soundtrack out of all of the Genesis era Sonics, but I strongly suggest that you listen to all of them and not really just the platformers, Mean Bean Machine, Sonic Spinball, really any Sonic game on the Genesis. They're all gold. Vector Man is a cult classic and dare I say fun as hell. I personally enjoyed the first game, but the second to me, eh, they kind of jumped the shark. This game was made by Blue Sky Entertainment and the composer was John Holland. It is a relatively short game as well, but the good news is, is that the entire length of the game is supplemented with a pretty unique sounding soundtrack that stands out amongst the Genesis library. <laughs> Ever wanted to play a game where you're a puppet with a detachable head with the sole purpose of destroying the evil King Dark Demon and his horde of minions? Well, that's what you do in Dynamite Heady, another game from Treasure. We have five composers putting their skills together to bring us songs that fit the bill for the action. And those songs are named like early 2000s file names. I'm impartial to the song I Like Goldie Hawn and Onami Konami.
Comic Zone is one of those games you either like or you don't like. For those that do, it's likely because of the action, the art style, and generally how it's presented. For those that don't, it's likely because this game is incredibly difficult and the controls, they're much to be desired. But for this game in particular, we have a motion picture composer, Howard Drossen, who made music for Barbershop, Blade Trinity, and The Black Klansman. He's still out there composing. Good on him. I did not expect this game to have such a bopping soundtrack, nor did I expect it to be a good game, but it is. Based on Batman the Animated Series, this game was released on tons of consoles, but the Genesis version in particular has amazing music courtesy of Jesper Kidd, which is one of the names you should know in the compositional world. Jesper is Danish, and he's been cranking out soundtracks for tons of games you likely didn't realize, such as Borderlands, Assassin's Creed, Hitman, Unreal Tournament, Soul Calibur, Darksiders, you know, he's been around. Beyond Oasis is one of those games that you should play, even if you don't like Genesis games, even if you don't like top-down action adventure games. The way that the game plays is essentially The Legend of Zelda on steroids cut in with some Soul Blazer pixie dust. We play as Prince Ali, or Thor, depending on what version or regional release we play, who discovers a gold armlet that once belonged to a wizard of legend. It was created to counteract the silver armlet, which manifests evil and destruction. So we need to find our four spirits to prevent that from happening. The music was composed by Yuzo Koshiro, and it's a very different style from him. We're so used to the bebopping down the street, fuck man, I wanna kick something in the face style of music, but in this case, we have a more melodic approach. It showcases just how versatile Koshiro was as a composer.
Well, this game was unreleased. That's a shame. We should listen to the music. Oh, wow. What's that? What's that on the horizon? What is that shining mythological manipulator of melodies? Could it be Tim Fallen? Yeah, it's Tim Fallen. Shame it wasn't released. I'm not a huge fan of Gauntlet, and I chalk it up to just not being alive at the time. Gauntlet is a weird game to me, but for those who enjoyed it, I'm sure Gauntlet 4 gave them an erection that rivaled time and space. The game was developed by M2, published by Tengen, which in other words is Atari, but what's more important is that there are two compositional credits from two amazing individuals in the gaming industry, Hitoshi Sakamoto, who worked on titles such as Vagrant Story, Radiant Silvergun, Bloody Roar, Ogre Battle, The Works. And the second was Masaharu Iwata, who worked quite often alongside Sakimoto and has tons of games under his belt, such as Might and Magic Book 1. There's a unique sound that these two managed to create, and it adds volume to the game. I don't know much about Elemental Master. From what I know, it's a top-down shooter made by Technosoft, who is known for jumping genres more than an indecisive liberal arts major. You never knew what they were gonna do, be it pinball, racing, shooting, it was all over the place. In the case of Elemental Master, Toshiharu Yamanishi put so much focus into the soundtrack, it just acts like a catalyst to the experience, which I appreciate.
Devilish The Next Possession is a weird game, and by weird, I mean think Arkanoid, but omnidirectional and with enemies. A lot of them, actually. In fact, I think this is one of the more interesting and novel concepts for block-breaking games of the era. This is another Hitoshi Sakamoto compositional credit, and like we saw in Gauntlet 4, there is a sort of epicness in his songs. Let's listen to a few. Musha belongs to the Aleste franchise, specifically it's the fourth game in the mainline franchise coming after Aleste 2 and predating Game Gear Aleste. Compile historically really loved this franchise and I don't blame them. They took the shoot 'em up genre and kicked it into turbo overdrive and filled it to the brim with challenges. Think of Blazing Lasers, Gunnack, Xanak, all of which are considered parallel to the Aleste franchise. Musha alone is named after the advanced weaponry we pilot, the metallic uniframe super hybrid armor! It's basically a Gundam that transforms into a flying robot thingy. We play as Terry, and our job is to go destroy a human-built supercomputer that never bought WinZip. Now it's taking over the world, or at least trying to destroy it. As mentioned in the previous episode I did where I talked about my top 10 easiest Genesis games, Thunder Force 3 and 4 are two amazing games that have incredible soundtracks. I have a question for everyone though. For those who play shooting games, be it vertical, omnidirectional, or horizontal, do you ever get so zoned in that you miss the intricacies of the soundtracks, or does the music empower you? For me, it's the latter. Good solid music can really create an ambiance unlike any other.
When we think of the best music on the Genesis, I hand that superlative to Yuzo Koshiro, who I hold in exceptionally high regard for making the Genesis sound chip his bitch. Not just his bitch, it's, it's on a leash, bitch. A freaky bitch. You know what I mean? Kashira went above and beyond to provide truly organic songs and sounds, and trying to find the best two was very difficult. In my opinion, Streets of Rage 3 is better off viewed as an interactive soundtrack because the game itself isn't that great. <laughs> it's literally an interactive soundtrack that you happen to play a fighting game to. Streets of Rage 3 is a very progressive compositional work from Kashiro, but it feels more like an experiment. Streets of Rage 2 is my favorite soundtrack that I listened to from the American Genesis Library. It was kind of tough to not add Shinobi to this list, and I'm sure I'm going to have some pitchforks shoved right at my asshole at the comments section, but I just didn't feel that Shinobi was as great when it came to what Kashira was capable of, so instead, I focused on what I consider to be Kashira's greatest work on the Sega Genesis, Streets of Rage 2. Not only was Streets of Rage 2 a phenomenal game, it was the golden standard of beat-em-ups on the Genesis, and of course, it had a soundtrack from the Tim Fallen of the Genesis, Yuzo Kashiro. And those are my top 10 Genesis soundtracks. I know that the Genesis library is chock full of great music. That's what happens when you provide composers a medium to grow and a sound chip that works. How do you feel about this list? Feel free to tell everyone down below. Who knows, maybe you'll even expose someone to a wonderful soundtrack they didn't even know existed. Also, if you watch this video to the end, you're already home in this community. We're a group of individuals who really love gaming and enjoy reminiscing on a time when life was just a little bit easier to live, so feel free to subscribe. Finally, if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button so maybe we can get a Streets of Rage 5. <laughs> As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes, fortify her out.